Hi, and welcome back to Glassbox writing automated tests using WebDriver. Today we're going to have a look at using Maven to create a really basic framework to write tests in. We will look at what is Maven and why we would want to use Maven and then have a look at doing a really basic setup going through how we can use Maven to better manage our automation framework. So first of all, what is Maven? So Maven is essentially a building tool which is used to manage primarily Java projects. Maven is used usually for two key things. The first is to manage the libraries that we use for our project. So when I say libraries, I'm directly talking about jars. The other task is to use Maven to basically build tasks for a project. So for instance, you can build several different kinds of tasks using Maven to do things like running tests in specific order, running specific types of tests, running test suits, you can go as far as even defining directories and where resources are, so on. Maven is essentially a building tool used to manage a project. That said, what can we use Maven for? How does Maven help us manage our projects that we write in Java? Or to be more specific, whenever we write tests, how can Maven be used to help us manage our tests? Well, we can use Maven primarily to manage the versions of Selenium and JUnit we use as an example. In this tutorial, what we will do is set up a basic framework using Maven, which will manage our jars, and then we're going to write a test without importing any jars in ourselves to ensure that the jars that we identified in Maven works. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to Eclipse and as you can see, I've got nothing here. It's a blank slate. I'm going to go to File, New, Project, and I'm going to select Maven Project. I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to use my default workspace. Hit Next, and I'm just going to use the Maven Arch Type Quick Start. I'm going to hit Next. And here, I would need to define the group ID, the artifact ID, snapshot version and the package. So before we go in forward, what is group ID, artifact ID and so on? Your group ID is essentially the phrase that will be used to identify your projects uniquely across all other projects. There's nothing stopping you from using say multiple Maven projects as part of a bigger project. So your group ID is essentially what we will use to identify a unique project. So in this instance, I've said com.glassboxed. By all means, change it to what you feel like. The artifact ID is essentially the name you give to your project. It is what is used to identify the actual project. So in this instance, I'm going to say Maven WebDriver JUnit. The version is essentially the version of your project. You can obviously have multiple different versions of a project. It is also used to distribute your project. So let's just say you were to give this project to someone else or you were to distribute it to someone else. The way someone would identify whether the project that you've just given to them is a later version than an earlier one is identified via this version here. So let's hit finish and that should set up our project. Right, so if I now expand under the package explorer, we can see that Maven's created a few things. It's created a source main Java, followed by our package name, followed by this app.java class, which is basically a hello world class. So we won't need this, so go ahead and delete it. It's also created a test directory with a similar approach. Again, we don't need that. Let's go ahead and delete that. If you also have a look at these Maven dependencies, you can see that it only has one jar, i.e. in this case it's JUnit with a very specific version 3.8.1. Now we're going to visit this in a second but to quickly elaborate, this directory or this hierarchy was decided based on the type of Maven project we selected. 
because we selected quick start that is this is what we got now before we actually start to use projects we know as a matter of fact that to use something like selenium to use something like JUnit, we need to get the jars say of the web and we need to import it in as external classes but what maven allows us to do is to define this somewhere in a text in this case in this pom.xml a pom.xml is basically what controls the versions the tasks that you can do as per your project so if i open up pom.xml you can see that it has various different interfaces to allow me to add these classes or dependencies so here you can see that it has a junit jar added to it if i were to say change the version of this this would automatically go on the net it would automatically grab that version of junit and replace the existing jars this is one of the brilliance of using maven it does a lot of hand holding for you the only thing you need to do is tell it what it needs to look for so i'm just going to go to the pom.xml tab simply because i prefer to edit xml's as opposed to these interfaces so the first thing i'm going to do is change my version of JUnit from 3.8.1 to 4.11 uh, I like to use 4.11, it's always been very stable for me. I also need to add in a dependency for Selenium. So to add in a dependency is very straightforward. What you do is type dependency. And in this dependency, we're going to have a group ID. And in this case, the group ID is org selenium hq dot selenium we also need an artifact id in this case it's selenium dash java and we also need a version i'm going to go with 2.42.2 So now, if I were to hit save, you can now see that it's actually gone online and grabbed all the relevant jars for me. So in our previous videos, we've had to manually go and look for these jars. But in this instance, it's actually gone and grabbed every single jar that I would need as part of these dependencies. So you can see using Maven is a really big time saver we've just basically asked maven that we need very specific versions of very specific libraries and what maven has done for us is gone and grabbed all of the jars it's also grabbed a lot of extra jars that we may not need that is part of a package but the beauty here is we don't really care or we don't really need to know in great detail what each jar is as long as we are happy that this is the library or the collection of jars we need in order to be able to satisfy or in this case write our tests a dependency is basically something we define as a requirement to our project so now that we've defined two dependencies also notice that the version of JUnit has also changed we can now go ahead and write a test without manually importing anything and our tests should just work so I'm going to right click on the package under the test directory I'm going to say new and I'm going to select class and I'm going to call this zoo test so in this class I'm just going to go ahead and write a test so I'm just going to create a variable first call it driver and if I were to go here and try and import this in notice it's all given me an import already because this jar already exists inside the project, i.e. is part of this list. So I have had no need to go and look for this jar online. It's already there. I'm going to write a basic before method. And in this method, I'm just going to do a simple setup just to initialize my driver. 
and I'm going to say it's a new Firefox driver. And I'm going to navigate to my test site. I'm also going to go ahead and import in these classes. I'm also going to write an after method. And in here, all I'm going to do is close the driver. And finally, I'm going to write a basic test. In my test, I'm just going to assert on the homepage title. And I'm also going to import in test and that's it so just to complete my setup I'm going to save and I'm just going to run this just to make sure it works so right click run as JUnit test fantastic looks like it worked first time so I've written a really basic test the focus of this video wasn't to write a test, I mean we have been over this before, this really shouldn't be any surprise, there isn't anything new here. The new stuff is on this POM level, on this Maven side of the project. So by utilizing Maven, we can very easily manage the version of jars we have. We can very easily manage the types of jars we have. Now a lot of you have say come across issues where the version of Selenium you have versus the version of JUnit you have versus the version of Eclipse you have as well as the version of browsers you have doesn't always work and sadly that is reality sometimes things are just not compatible and it makes life difficult because what you have to do is go online find relevant versions of jars and try it out it makes things difficult However, if you use Maven, it makes things exceptionally more easier. All you do is change versions in the POM. Maven will go off, it will find the relevant jars, download them for you, replace your previous versions, and then you can just rerun your test and see how it goes. Ideally, you should be always using the latest versions of everything. But sadly, that approach cannot be catered for everyone. So from time to time, you do need to use older versions for compatibility issues. So hopefully in this video, I've answered some of your Maven questions. And I hope that you can use Maven to build more manageable frameworks going forward. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.